time to stay true. But it's time to be moving. This road I'm choosing is calling me home. I've set my course for up north where the cold winds are blowing. There's no use in trying to make sense of what I am feeling. I know that the answer lies over the should horizon. With the ghosts of our ghettos and the wild battle meadows of the day. To the high, wide, and lonesome, the home of the bugger of dream. To the big smoky valley and the loneliest highway where the cowboy is gay. Now all that matters is work in Nevada for the round of the spring. This dream I'm chasing lies in the great basin. I'll take my chance on a ranch in the high desert way. There's no use in trying to make sense of what I am feeling. I know that the answer lies over the distant horizon. But the ghosts of my kettles and the wild battle and also the name. To the high, wide, and lonesome, the home of the bugger who trained. Oh, I let it rip. Hello, I'm Alan Salazar. I'm from the village of Pasekva, what we now call San Fernando, California. But I'm a member of the Fernandino Tataviam tribe, and my family is Tataviam and Shumash. My Tataviam side of the family traces back to the village of Chigoyanga, which is where modern day Magic Mountain is. For those of you that don't know a lot about the Tataviam tribe, we're a very small tribe and most of our, our language and our stories and a large part of our culture uh, has been lost. We're trying to bring the language back and stories and things like that back to our culture. So tonight I want to share with you one of my original stories. Uh, it's told in the spirit of my Tataviam ancestors, the way I believe uh, my Tataviam ancestors would have told this story. And it's the story of Tata, the Tataviam Tobi. It's my first book, uh, and uh, I wrote it, and Mona Lewis, my girlfriend, did all the beautiful illustrations. Now, for you, those of you who don't know what a Tobi is, uh, they're a small bird, a little bit bigger than a sparrow, uh, a little bit smaller than a robin. Technically, what we have here in this area, Santa Clarita and Southern California, are the California towies. But for this story, because Tata was born near the village of Paing, he is a Tataviam towie. So once there was a young uh, towie, his name was Tata. And like many young birds, his parents taught him many important lessons. They taught him how to hop and jump. Toys don't fly very much. They never fly very far or very high. But his parents taught him how to fly and where to get the best seeds and to find the juiciest bugs and insects. 
And like most parents, they would tell their sons and daughters to be careful and watch out for the killer hawks, eagles, and falcons that had very sharp and strong talons. Now, Tata was about five weeks old, and being a teenager, and like most teenagers, he didn't believe everything his parents told him. He thought they were exaggerating. And he wanted to see these killer hawks, eagles, and falcons himself. So one day while his mom and pop and brothers and sisters were hopping around eating bugs and seeds underneath some coyote brush, Tata flew to the top of that brush, about four or five feet high. He looked to his left, looked to his right. He didn't see any killer hawks, eagles, or falcons. So he saw, he saw an elderberry tree about 30 feet tall. And he flew to the top of the elderberry tree. And once again, he looked to the left and he looked to the right and he didn't see any killer hawks, eagles, or falcons. And then he flew to the top of the grandfather oak tree, over 60 feet tall. It's the highest he'd ever flown before. And he flew up to the top of the oak tree and he looked to his left and he looked to his right and he didn't see any killer hawks, eagles, or falcons. Just about then, his friend, Juan the Sparrow, flew up next to him in the tree. Juan asked Tata, what are you doing way up here? You don't usually fly this high. And Tata told his friend what his parents had told him about the killer hawks, eagles, and falcons. He said, I've looked all over for them. I've looked to the left, I've looked to the right, I've looked all around. I don't see any killer hawks or eagles. Just then, his friend Juan the Sparrow said, look up, my friend. And they both looked up, and way up above them was a big red-tailed hawk. Ta-ta was very impressed with the size of the hawk. And just about then, the hawk dove down towards the two little birds. They were scared and they jumped into the center of the hawk of the oak tree to protect themselves. But the hawk, he wasn't after the two little birds. He flew right by them and scooped down and grabbed a rattlesnake in its powerful talons and killed it and flew off. Tata looked at his friend Juan and said, our parents were telling the truth. Maybe we should listen to them a little bit more closely. And Juan agreed. And from that day on, they did listen to him a little bit more closely. But then they looked at each other and they looked and looked and looked. And then they started laughing and laughing and laughing, knowing that they really weren't going to listen that much to their parents. But Tata did listen to his parents. And he was careful not to fly too high and to stay underneath the brush where it's safe. But you know, even a Tatavi Amtoli can roll his eyes. And that's what Tata would do whenever his parents would try to t lecture him and tell him about the killer hawks, eagles, and falcons. I hope you enjoyed that story. Like I said, it's an original story, uh, and uh, uh, there aren't that many Tataviam stories. So I'm working on a creation story right now, and Mona and I, Mona and I hopefully in the next three to four months, we'll, we'll have a, a creation story. Creation stories are very important to all tribes and all peoples. Everyone has creation stories. The Bible has a creation story. The shoe match, have the rainbow bridge, and we got hands like lizard. And I want to write a Tataviam story, creation story. And my story will tell how the animals created the Tataviam people. But I hope you enjoyed that story. I'm going to put in a little shameless plug. If you're interested in Tata the Tataviam Toei, Go to that website, 
www.sunspritehandwork.com. It has history of the Tatavion people, how Mona made all the paints for all the pictures from natural pigments. And it tells you, tells you how she made all the beautiful colors from various ochres that I collected along the Santa Clara River and there in, in Santa Clarita in the, in the foothills and mountains and even here around Ventura in Ojai. But all the paintings and drawings in, in our book were done with natural pigments. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Have a blessed day. Thank you. That weekend back in June Four days Drinking, having fun Yes, sir We left our home in good hands Left it to our teenage son What could possibly go wrong? He's a kid, he'll probably watch TV As I cast my mind back over time That dreadful thought, well it came over me We came home Monday noon And not a moment too soon It appeared a party did ensue Seems so bad, but every hour I got mad As the web of lies it started to undo The party came alive When three became five And five became twenty-two There were strangers in my bed Smoking off their head And the sheets were stuck together Just like glue Oh, beware Things that you want to hear It's just me and a friend And a quiet weekend Just homework and ginger beer Son, I'm pretty wise Cause I've told them same old lies Like a fool said, have a drink on me I gave an inch but he took a mile I should have seen it in his smile Beware, oh beware Beware of the teenager Beware, oh beware, beware of 
beware of the teenager. Also on the god, I have Dagwalonska McMasters, Dagwado, and Adanathli Wahya Ale Awahali McMasters. Hello everyone, my name is Thor McMasters, and my brother is Wolf and Eagle McMasters. We're all Cherokee and Cree. Uh, the introduction I did was in our Cherokee language. We're also all three grass dancers. Uh, the grass dance was a uh, Northern Plains dance, it is also a warrior society dance. We'd be called upon to come in before ceremony or setting up our new camp or battles to clear the fields. Uh, now each one of us will be showing you a different variation of the style that you'll see uh, in today's circle. Uh, thank you. Also everybody, my name's Wolf. Uh, I'm going to be doing the old style grass dance. It is a lot slower dance form. Uh, I stay in a minimal space and I hope you enjoy. So, one.
next variation you'll see me demonstrating is uh, known as contemporary or modern style. It's a lot faster paced than the old style and it's a lot more popular with the younger generation. Uh, you'll see me covering more ground and uh, I have higher kicks and it's more flashier moves. everyone I'm gonna be doing the crow hop today which is not just grass dance it's also done by other styles of dance and all it is is movements and mimics the dance of the crow
Oh my God, uh, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time and watching this. Uh, you know, every step we take is uh, always a learning experience. Uh, I want to say, uh, give a big thanks to uh, the uncle and, uh, uncles and uh, elders who have brought me and my brothers in and taught us the ways of the dance. So until we see each other again, thank you. That movie playing, lights are turned down low, pictures on the TV cast a lonesome glow, watching all my heroes right across the screen, can't stop thinking how things might have been. Time was my daddy told me Not so long ago When a man could ride a hundred miles And never see a soul Range is growing smaller The walls are closing in The freedom that my daddy knew about the things I know are true Just sometimes this old cowboy gets the blue High upon a mesa Gazing down below Lights on the horizon From the city glow I hear the wheels whining on some distant road, but I'm thinking back a hundred years or so. Wind drove us trail the longhorn, the west was wild and free, just in the open prairie, as far as you can see. But the range is growing smaller, the walls are closing in. Freedom that my daddy knew is coming to an end. Ooh, ain't no use complaining about the things I know are true. Just sometimes it's okay. Daddy told me not so long ago when a man could ride a hundred miles and never see a soul. But the range is growing smaller, the walls are closing in. Freedom that my daddy knew. Sometimes this old cowboy gets a blue
Michael Fleming. The house had gone to bring again to the midnight sky a sunset glow. Now the chimney was all of the house that stood, like a pistol after the petals go. The barn opposed across the way that would have joined the house in flame had it been the will of the wind was left to bear forsaken the place's name. No more it opened with all one end for teams that came by the stony road to drum on the floor with scurrying hoofs and brush the mow to summer load. The birds that came to it through the air at broken windows flew out and in. Their murmur more like the sigh we sigh from too much dwelling on what has been. Yet for them the lilac renewed its leaf and the aged elm though touched with fire and the dry pump flung up an awkward arm and the fence post carried a strand of wire. For them there was really nothing sad but though they rejoiced in the nest they kept, one had to be versed in country things not to believe the Phoebes wept. Are you listening, Brother Pierce? It's the Grit Gang! Calling you out, Brother Pierce. We need you to put on them angel wings and play that harp of yours. Well, all righty then.
Thanks for having Grid Out as the 10x10 10 10 2021 season house band. This month, Sister Carissa was there on guitar and vocals, Brother Stewart back there on the acoustic bass, we had genuine friend of Grit, David Pierce, blowing away on the harmonica. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Brother Squeezebox Sam, and as always, leave you with a little Squeezebox trivia. Since this is the 10x10's official Western-themed edition, figured we'd tap into a little bit of the Western heritage of Newhall itself. You may be familiar with the Monogram Studios Ranch, better known as Melody Ranch, which it was called after Gene Autry procured the property in 1952. <laughs> it came, became a burgeoning television studio during the 1950s until the property was destroyed in 1962 by a fire. Mr. Autry tried various ways of keeping the property going, including turning it into a Western museum, but ultimately he just kept it until 1990 until his prize horse Champion 3 passed away, because it was the horse's home. Incidentally, the horse Champion 3 is the horse that was used as the guide for the portrait of Autry and Champion in the courtyard of the Autry Western Heritage Museum in Griffith Park, California. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. On with the 10 by 10. Good afternoon. Wayfaring stranger. Scott T. going to play some lead. He's sitting in today. Our special guest, Marilyn Tuttle, that we're delighted to have. And this is Greg Kugas. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world below There's no sickness, no toil, no danger In that bright land to which I go I'm going there All my loved ones who've gone on I'm just going over Jordan I'm just going over home I know dark clouds will gather round me my way is hard and steep, but beauteous fields arise before me, where God's redeemed their virgins keep. I'm going there to see my mother, she said she'd meet me when I come. Just going over Jordan I'm just going over
Dark clouds will gather round me I know my way is hard and steep But beauteous fields arise before me Where God's redeemed their virtues keep I'm going there to see my mother she said she'd meet me when I come I'm just going over Jordan I'm just going over home I'm just going over Jordan I'm just going Hi folks, I'm P.W. Conway. Thank you for letting me share some of my cowboy poetry with you. Now today, my first poem is, oh, one I wrote a long time ago. It's called, Here's to the Cowboy Life. It weren't much of a life, so some folks say. But I wouldn't have had it any other way. Pushing cows and getting dirty, I reckon it didn't look too pretty. Riding drag, fixing fence. Sometimes it didn't make much sense. But the good Lord 
let me make my choice. On a quiet prairie, I could hear his voice. He showed me mountains that glittered gold and clear blue lakes of icy cold. Eagles flying in the air. Bear cubs playing without a care. I've seen blistering days and cold winter nights. A calf being born. Barroom fights. Prairie grass gently waving and wolf pups in the meadows misbehaving. Why, well, I've seen longhorns walking single file and they'd be stretched out for at least a mile. But a word off, man, there was pain and tears. Like when I lost that old mare I'd had for years. Huh, she was pretty ornery when I broke her to ride. And it broke my heart when she finally died. There was times she was my only friend. But at the Rainbow Bridge, we'll ride again. I'm going to miss the smell of campfire smoke. So thick that it could make you choke with mesquite embers a glowing bright as the morning turned from dark to light, with coffee on the coals and beans a burning, and the smell of bacon needing turning. But this cowboy life, truth be told, will take a young man and make him old. With the open range for a bunkhouse and the prairie for a bed, starry sky for a blanket and a saddle for my head. Oh, I've seen it all, both bad and good. You know, I'd do it all again if only I could. So here's to all the trails that we've been on, to all the hands that have come and gone, to all the ponies we broke and rode, <laughs> yeah, and to all the times that we got thrown. Here's to all the glory and the strife. Here's to all the boys and the cowboy life. Now, a few years back, I was doing my poetry up in Kansas. And after the show, me and a few of the boys, we took off and went to go see a rodeo outside of Abilene. Now, when the rodeo was over, I met this old cowboy. And I asked him, I said, are, are you with the rodeo? He said, was once. I said, really? I said, well, what did you do? He said, rode bulls. I said, really? I said, well, let me ask you a question. If you had the opportunity to do it all again, would you still do it? I mean, do you ever regret riding them bulls? And he got all puffed up in his chair and he sat back and he looked at me and he said, Do I regret riding bulls? Not one darn little bit. I've broken hands and arms and feet and legs. Heck, I even broke my hip. I've been beaten up, beaten down, turned every which way but loose. I've had to scramble on all fours just to keep from getting goosed. I've been hung up in the rigging. I've been dropped down in the well. Folks say it looks real painful. I told them, yeah, it hurts like hell. I've been kicked and stepped on and rolled on too and drugged through mud and dirt and had to do it all again, no matter how I hurt. I'm still young but feeling old, like worn out saddle leather. I've got screws and bolts inside my skin, just holding me together. Well, I've rode me some shoot fighters that could pin you in real tight, some double kickers and honkers. <laughs> Lord, they weren't too polite. I rode them that's hooky, and some honest buckers too. Well, I've been knocked out, and when I woke up, I'd tell myself I'm through. But I'd always climb back on them and say just one more ride. I reckon being a quitter, I simply can't abide. Did I do it all for glory, or did I do it just for fun? I guess it don't matter much, 
when all is said and done. Because I always knew there would come a day when a bull would jerk me down. And there'd be no time for bailing out. And I'd be lying on the ground. And he'd turn and come a-stomping. And he'd hook me with his horn. And there I'd be with my boot tips up, taking the full brunt of his scorn. Well, that's just the way it happened. But somehow I survived. And looking back at the rides and wrecks, I guess I'm lucky to be alive. But would I do it all again, you ask? Well, I may have to think that through. But do I regret riding bulls? Well, truth is, sometimes I do. Well, I hope you like that. You know, my granddaddy was born in 1887 up in Ogallala, Nebraska. Now his daddy owned a mercantile. And there was this old time cowboy that used to come up there every day, sit on the front porch in an old wooden chair. Now my granddaddy when he was a young boy, he used to go up there and sit with him. And the old man would tell him stories about the good old days, driving herds up to the rails when there was such thing as cowboys. And I can only imagine that they went something like this. Those were the glory days we had back then, driving herds up to the rails. Now they're just old memories, old men telling tales. First there was Abilene, then Ellsworth and Wichita, crazy Kansas cow towns <laughs> with very little law. And we'd come off them dusty trails after months of pushing cattle just wild and woolly cowboys from being too long in the saddle. And we'd hit town with a hoop and a holler and a pocket full of jingle. And we'd buck the tiger, have a drink. And with the ladies, we could mingle. My cowboy days are over now. And looking back, it seems to me there weren't no better time to be alive, to be young, and wild and free. But now they're raising towns where prairie grass used to wave. If I could only turn back time, a way of life, still yet to save. To be a cowboy once again, riding for the brand, just living the life we chose, pushing corns across the land. We never thought we'd ever see them times come to a close. We thought they'd last forever. Well, that's progress, I suppose. I long to sleep on trodden ground instead of a feather bed. And I'd rather have a saddle than a pillow for my head. I'd love to breathe the open air and feel the gentle breeze as it dances through the canyons and whispers to the trees, or crossing raging rivers in the early spring with ice still hard along the banks as the rushing water sings. And even when I night hawked, it didn't seem that bad. And singing low to cattle made me feel a little sad. A long to hear the laughter around the campfires late at night and smell the coffee on the coals before the morning light. But I know our times have come and gone. The glory days will be no more. Now I sit in coat and tie in front of this general store. And I tip my hat to each passerby, and they smile and give a wave. 
never knowing the cowboy life I led that no one could have saved. Well, there it is. I sure hope you've enjoyed our time together and my poetry. And if you're inclined, please check out my Buckaroo Poetry books on Amazon, as well as uh, some of my performances on YouTube under P.W. Conway. Thanks again for this time together. And God bless, and I hope you all stay safe. And we'll, we'll see you on down the trail. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My lazy day. Yeah. Well, I might have gone fishing. Started thinking it over. Well, I rode to the river. It's my long way. Well, it must be the season. No rhyme or no reason. Well, I'm taking it easy. It's my lazy day. Don't bother calling, cause I ain't coming. Just get you on by me. Stay out of my way. Cause a little lean thinking might drive me to drinking. Well, I'm taking it easy. It's my lazy day. Taking no orders. Well, I'm taking it easy. It's my lazy day. Here's David Jackson. language. My name's Kat High and I'm telling stories here in my home in Topanga, California, which is the ancestral homeland of the Gabrielino Tongva and the Shumash, right along the creek. Both tribes live together. So this time of year we tell a lot of stories. Sometimes it's raining, go inside and tell stories. So I'm going to tell you some coyote stories today. And the first one I'm going to tell you is how Coyote got his name. I know you were wondering about that. 
So a long, long time ago, all the creatures lived up in the sky country with Creator. And when Creator wanted to talk to somebody, he said, hey, hey, you in the red shirt, and everybody in red shirts looked around, who, me, who, me? No, 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 you with the glasses. And everybody with glasses would look around, no, 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 no. Finally, Creator had a brilliant idea. I have an idea, he said, I'm going to give you all names. Now, you go home tonight and you think of what your name will be. And when you come back in tomorrow morning, I'll give you that name. Well, Coyote, wanted to be the biggest and strongest of all. He wanted to be eagle, soaring high. No, 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 no. Maybe he wanted to be bear, big and powerful in the forest. Or maybe he wanted to be mountain lion, ready to pounce. So he said, I'm going to go home and I'm going to stay up all night. So I'll be the first one there. So Coyote went home. He said, well, what am I going to do to stay up all night? I know. I'll sing. Yana, hey, yane, yana, hey, yane, yana, hey, yane, yana, hey, yana, hey, yana, hey, yane. Oh, yana, hey, yane, yana, hey, yane, yana, hey, yana, hey, yana, hey, and he sat down. Yana, hey, uh-oh, he was falling asleep. That's not going to work. I know. I'm going to get up and dance. Yana, hey, yana, yana, hey, yana, yana, hey, yana. Oh, and he got tired and he sat back down. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. I know. I'm going to take these two sticks and I'm going to hold my eyes wide open all night. That way I won't fall asleep. So he put the sticks in. Yana, hey, yana, yana, hey, yana. His eyes got heavier and heavier and heavier and his eyes closed. And those sticks held his eyelids shut. Well, the next morning, all the animals went to Coyote, to Creator, to get their name. Mountain Lion came and got his name. Eagle came and got his name. Bear came and got his name. Snail came and got his name. Turtle came and got his name. Inchworm came and got his name. Everybody's going, where's Coyote? <gasps> Uh-oh, we'd better go over and see what happened to Coyote. Everybody ran over to Coyote's house. There he was, sound asleep in his chair with his eyes pinned shut. Wake up, Coyote, wake up, wake up. And he said, what's the matter? It's still the middle of the night. What's going on? They said, no, Coyote. It's almost noon and you've been asleep. Oh no, Coyote jumped up. He ran over to Creator. Creator, here I am, I'm Eagle. No, Coyote, you're not Eagle. Oh, 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 I'm Bear. No, Coyote, that's taken, you're not Bear. I'm Mountain Lion. No, Coyote. No, 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 what am I? Oh, Coyote, you, are coyote. No, no, no. I don't want to be coyote. No, no, no. They said, yes, coyote, but you have one of the most important jobs of all. <gasps> oh, creator, what is that? You are to show humans how not to do things. And that's how he got his name. <laughs> Here's another coyote story. Coyote thought that he was the ladies' man. And one night he was looking up in the sky and he saw all the twinkling stars. And 
To him, they looked like beautiful star maidens dancing and dancing. He said, I want to come up and dance with you. They said, oh, you can't come up here. The North Star, the head of the stars said, no, 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 you can't come up here. You're a coyote. They said, no, 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 I want to come up and dance with you. He said, ah. So he went over to his friend, Spider. He said, Spider. Build me a ladder so I can climb to the top of the redwood tree. I want to get up there and dance with the stars. So Spider built him a web. He climbed up to the redwood tree. Redwood tree leaned back and flung Coyote way up into the sky. Coyote went sailing up there and he said, here I am. I am the best dancer. He said, you've got to dance with me. North Star said, you know, if you dance with us, you have to keep dancing. You can't stop dancing. You have to dance all the time. He says, I can do it. So Coyote starts dancing with the Star Maidens. He's dancing, he's twirling, he's swirling. And pretty soon, Coyote was getting thirsty. He was getting tired. He started getting lower and lower. And he says, I got to stop for a minute. North Star said, uh-uh. If you want to dance with us, you have to keep dancing all the time. He's dancing and dancing, dancing lower, dancing lower, lower. Finally, boom, coyote went shooting out of the sky. And in Northern California, they say that when you see a shooting star, that's coyote falling from the sky once again. And Crater Lake may have been where he hit for the first time. That's Dancing with the Stars. So the last story I want to tell you is about Coyote eating the sky. So one night Coyote was lying down. He was getting a little hungry, a little hungry in his tummy. He says, I'm going to eat the first thing I see when I wake up. So Coyote falls asleep. When he wakes up, what does he see when he looks up? The sky. Coyote says, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> and he starts sucking up the sky. <laughs> He's sucking it up and it's sick. It's coming down into his stomach. <laughs> and it got totally dark. There was no more sky. All the creatures were going, what happened? It got dark. This one little boy said, I know what happened. Coyote ate the sky. I'm gonna go get that sky and bring it back. So he starts going over and Bear says, I'm gonna come help you. Skunk says, I'm gonna come help you. Rabbit says, I'm gonna come help you. We need that sky. It's all dark, we're bumping into each other. So little boy goes over and he crawls down into Coyote's belly and he starts pulling on the sky, pulling and pulling. Oh my gosh, he can't get it. He says, hold my hand. And he reaches out and Rabbit grabs hold of his hand. They're pulling and they're pulling and Skunk grabs hold of Rabbit's hand and Squirrel grabs hold of his hand and, and Coyote is lying there going, oh, oh, oh. Bear grabs hold, mountain lion grabs hold, and together they pull and they pull and they pull and pop. the sky pops out of Coyote. Whew. But where are we gonna put it now? How do we get it back up? Turkey Vulture says, I'm gonna fly it up to the highest point. So he gets hold of the sky and he flies up and up and up and puts it up there. And Woodpecker comes along and he says, I'm going to help, I'm going to nail it to the corners so it'll stay up there and Coyote won't pull it down again. So now we have the sky, Coyote can't eat it. And all the animals showed how they work together in a network to help each other. And that's our story for these days. Thank you.
Howdy. Here's a song written with and mostly by a buddy of mine named Aaron Allen, who generally plays lead but isn't here today. It's called God Don't Leave Me. Not too religious. I lay down in the bishop's saloon Two red jacks thought I'd clear the room A pair of red kings staring me in the face So I left that table without leaving a trace Out on the road, dust on my jeans I found an old pony who looked kind of mean I didn't think twice, there wasn't much time Forget about resting after doing the crime I saw a crowd of men, shots rang out, and here we go again. I grabbed my saddle and pointed to the sky. So God don't leave me without saying goodbye. Last so the day, strung up the night. The big owl gave me one hell of a fright. I stopped for water down at Maggie's farm. Howdy folks, I'm Smokey Culver, Poet Laureate of Pasadena, Texas. Yep, we've got one in Texas too. I want to thank Jeff Barber for making this all possible and for inviting me to be a part of this. I really appreciate that. I write and compose cowboy poetry and I'm going to share a few with y'all today. The first one is one I call The Life of a Cowboy. He's up in time to wake up the chickens. His pony is saddled to ride. It's time to pin cattle, load them up for the trip. Got his trusty old dog by his side. It's the life he has chosen and there's no turning back. But he'd have it no other way. There's nothing more real than the life of a cowboy. He lives that life every day. Now it's not for the man who prefers a big desk and assistant to answer his phone. It's not for the man who can't spend his days and nights on the range all alone. And in spite of the fact that the summers and winters get harder as years pass him by, he's a cowboy and that's all that he wants to be. I don't think you need to ask why. Sitting out by the fire watching stars in the sky, the heifers are bellowing low. He sips his black coffee, taking stock of his life. And there's only one thing that he knows. He's meant to be right where he is, no place else. And he'll be there when he's laid to rest. Oh, his life has been hard, but he's faced every challenge, and he's always given his best. It's a matter of pride, a tradition that his father's fathers have passed down to him, and it runs through his veins like the river that flows. It's as strong as a West Texas wind. In the years of his life, he's seen lots of changes, the progress that never stands still. But a cowboy is a cowboy, a horse is a horse. Things may change, but that never will. So God bless the cowboy and watch over him as he rides, watching over his herd. This American icon, this man of the West, with his hat and the jingling spurs. As he mounts that old pony, pulls his hat down and smiles. 
preparing to start a new day. No, oh, there's nothing more real than the life of a cowboy. He'd have it no other way. This poem is one I call Coffee with the Lord. I wrote this some time back and it's kind of special to me. The work day will be starting soon. A chill is in the air. Cows are stirring in the morning light. Coffee's brewing on the fire. A cowboy's wake up call. Had myself another restful night. I look up at the sky as stars make way for rays of sun. I think about how all this came to be. Creation lies before me, all its beauty to behold. It's coffee time with just the Lord and me. I think about the life I might have had if I had gone the other way, not lived the cowboy's dream. If I'd have never spent the night out on the open range or tasted water from a mountain stream. I guess a hand reached down to me from up above somewhere and pointed me toward the western sky. Because I was destined to become exactly what I am. I guess I'll be a cowboy till I die. Every time I bow my head to say a prayer of thanks, I look down at these dusty boots I wear and realize how blessed I am. No briefcase in my hand, a saddle, not a fancy office chair. Oh, I'm not saying that my life is easy, not at all. But I'd not walk the trade with anyone. I'll ride as long as I can saddle up and say a prayer and work each day from dawn till setting sun. This life of working cattle has been one of great rewards. He rides beside me watching over the herd. We have a talk each morning while the world is quiet and still, and when I speak, he listens to each word. That special way he answers me, I always understand. He tells me of his love in many ways. A gentle breeze across the grassy plains, a sky of blue, a field of wildflowers on a sunny day. Recalling when I saw a herd of mustangs running free across a canyon on a winter morn, I pulled my Stetson down and feel the comfort that it brings because just like me, it's getting kind of warm. Of all the trails I've traveled in the years that I have lived, they wound around, not one has yet gone straight. But I've survived the challenges, the trials that I have faced, done my best at closing every gate. Of all of my possessions, all the earthly goods I own, there's none that I'd not gladly give away. If keeping it meant giving up the life that I have known and riding for the brand another day. As morning falls and birds begin to sing their cheerful songs, I pour a cup and look around to see Another day, another chance to live my life for him, enjoying what the Lord has given me. A man can be a king with gold and treasures that abound, and anything he wants he can afford. But he'd not be as rich as this old cowboy sitting here, enjoying morning coffee with the Lord. Well, folks, I just want to thank you all again. And for my third and final poem, I thought I'd throw a little humor in there. And this is kind of a Kind of a true story of if, uh, you know, you take a, a story and make it a little bit more interesting by embellishing just a little bit. This is called a Walmart Rodeo, and it happened to me. Department stores are fine for folks who like to do their shopping with people wall to wall, just like sardines. But I'd have never thought I'd see a rodeo in one while browsing for a pair of Wrangler jeans. That aisle was just a little narrow where we met head on, but I thought I could step aside with tact. So I politely moved to give her just a bit more room and stepped across a rolling clothing rack. My boot heel caught the bar as I was making my attempt to clear the aisle, but I could not have known that clothing rack would come to life and go into a spin and buck like nothing I had ever rolled. I did my best to hold on with my free hand in the air while crashing into shelves and shopping carts. I rode from painting hardware down to school supplies and then I bounced my way on up to auto parts. Then passing sporting goods, I snagged a treble hook or two as I was flopping around just like a rag. Those hooks were catching t-shirts on the table that I passed. But now I'm looking somewhat like a flag. 
I almost caught my balance passing women's underwear. Now, I know I was causing quite a scene. I heard it on the intercom, the message loud and clear. Clean up on aisles 1 through 17. I landed on my head, my feet were pointing to the sky. A pair of queen-sized panties around my neck. And I've been pitched and I've been kicked and stomped a time or two, but never have I been in such a wreck. I looked up at the folks who gathered wishing I could hide cause I was sure the center of attention. They reached to help me up and asked me if it was okay. I just asked myself, what was I thinking? I had to get my bearings, figure out which end was up. I shook my head to try to clear the fog. And I decided from now on, I'm better off at home, doing my shopping from a catalog. Cause I am surely more accustomed to a rodeo where bulls give chase and clowns dive into barrels. I will not forget the day I took a bucking ride from children's shoes to ladies' fine apparel. Thanks and God bless you all. Hi, we're the Messick family and we are here tonight in Santa Clarita, California at my mom and dad's home. This is Wayne, my father, Gail, our mother. I am Virginia the eldest of the four kids, Stephen, Stacy, and her twin, our brother Scott, is working in Arizona, so not able to be with us today. We're gonna start you off taking you south of the border. South of the border. Santa Clarita Cowboy Festival this year and all the fun music and food that goes with it. 
and the yummy cowboy coffee and peach cobbler. We as a family have been playing together since we were young, but we have had the opportunity to play 18 consecutive years here at the Santa Clarita Cowboy Festival in our hometown. We've enjoyed putting this together for you all, and we hope you're enjoying it as well. This next song, Steve's going to be playing the accordion here. And uh, we are normally fortunate to have good weather when we're out here playing on these outdoor festivals. But once there in Melody Ranch 10, 15 years ago, there was so much wind, our eyes and ears were teeth were full of sand, and the accordion got so much sand in it that it wouldn't work. And he had to have it professionally cleaned afterwards. And now 160 acres. <laughs> Stacy's going to sing is called Someday Soon. And we as the Messick family hope to see you all in person someday soon.
This is the Ride to Independence. Riding hard to independence, telling my past goodbye. No more cattle, no more fences, chasing an endless sky. When I get there, will she be waiting under the old oak tree? Twenty years and I still wonder, will she remember me? Because I'm not the man I used to be. You know I'm not the man I used to be. I took some silver from a train in Texas, branded me all my days. They locked me up in San Antonio and thought they could change my ways. But now I'm back to where I started, fighting a winter breeze. All I ask is one more chance, begging you, darling, please, because I'm not the man I used to be. You know I'm not the man I used to be. Same old song. It won't be long till you're a better man. Now you ride in shadows high across the land. Sitting in a bar in Independence, whiskey in my glass. No more cattle, no more fences. All those days are past. It's time for me to write a brand new story under the prairie sun. In the morning, I'll take that train. I got to be moving on because I'm not the man I used to be. You know, I'm not the man I used to be. You know, I'm not the man I used to be. No, I'm not the man I used to be. Riding hard to independence. Thank you.